Hello and welcome everyone. Today I wanted to talk to you about uh, painting your sleeper PC or just any other computer build you're doing that uh, you want to paint. And um, today I'm, I'm going to talk about spray painting because this is the most common way it's done. It's the way I usually do it. Um, you know, it may not be the best way to do it for all applications, but um, it is a fairly affordable way of doing it and is fairly easy. Um, so it's quite accessible. And I have uh, spray painted quite a few uh, computer cases in my time. Um, you know, you've probably seen uh, some of my sleeper builds. Um, but also, I'm just kind of patching up um, older computers that may have been scratched and so forth. Oftentimes, the easiest thing to do, you know, if you can't match the original beige or white color, is to simply uh, sand it down and start over and, and paint it a new, fairly close color. So I'm just going to kind of go through real quick, talk about um, what the materials that I use, techniques that I use, and uh, show you some video here as well um, from the Tower of Doom build, which I am still working on, should be finished here soon, but I'm um, having to go back and in some cases repaint, in other cases paint for the first time uh, various components of that case. When it comes to spray painting, I usually go with Krylon just because it's fairly cheap, but probably not the cheapest you can find. I don't know. Just go with whatever brand that you're comfortable with. Um, but do get a primer. Make sure that you prime just about everything you're going to paint so that the paint adheres properly. Um, if it's a beige build, I usually go with satin ivory, though there's a number of other colors out there that'll work depending on your preference. Uh, if I'm doing black, I go with satin black. Um, I usually just go with the satin because, um, you know, it's not as dull as a matte, but uh, you can definitely make it glossier afterwards by using a clear coat. Um, and what I typically use is this gloss crystal clear here. Uh, it works really well and, um, you know, I put on as many layers as I want. Just kind of go back through, sand it a little bit, and then apply another layer and get it nice and glossy. Now before I paint anything, I uh, definitely need to sand. Again, so the paint adheres. Uh, what I typically use is 220 grit. Um, and I use these sanding bars because it just makes the whole process a little easier, a little smoother. Um, oftentimes I do kind of finish it off, smooth it a little bit uh, with 320 grit, but that's not always necessary. And something a lot of people often forget is the tack cloth. And this will remove all of those paint particles that you get um, after sanding. You want to make sure you get rid of all of those before you paint anything. Last but not least, uh, I do recommend investing in a respirator. Uh, you really don't want to be huffing down uh, all the spray paint. So this will this will keep you safe, keep you healthy. It's definitely worth the investment. All right, so first I'm going to sand here with my 220 grit uh, sandpaper. I've got this five and a quarter inch uh, cover here for my uh, Tower of Doom project and yeah, it's, it's lightly textured, um, and I don't want to rub off all of the texturing on this plastic piece. Um, so I just kind of lightly sand uh, back and forth with that 220 grit uh, sandpaper. It does take some of the texture off, but uh, but not all of it. And, uh, and, and it adds a little bit of texture, of course, as well. And it really kind of evens it out. Um, you know, and a nice benefit, if there's any kind of defects uh, in the surface, it should kind of... Uh, flatten those out as well as as well as get rid of uh, quite a bit of uh, you know any discoloration that that's right on the surface. Now you know, just go over it uh, one more time with the uh, 320 grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. At this point, it is uh, fairly smooth, but it still has a little bit of its original texture left. In order to remove all of that. Uh, all that paint I just sandpapered off, but it's still adhering to the surface. Gotta get your uh, tack cloth and uh, make sure that uh, you get into all the little grooves and everything. Uh, and I usually do several passes, make sure that uh, I've removed all of that uh, paint dust. After the sanding, it is time to prime. Again, this makes it a lot easier for the uh, main application to uh, to stick to whatever material it is you're spray painting. Um, I like to spray from about a foot or so distance. I'm usually putting on maybe two or three coats at least of primer 
uh, waiting about a minute or so in between. And here's a nice little before and after the uh, priming. Um, you know, the difference between the, the original beige color and the white of the prime provides a nice little base coat uh, covering up that original color. I like to wait about two days for the primer to dry um, and then sand it down again with 320 grit sandpaper just to kind of get rid of uh, any irregularities that might be there. Uh, don't forget to uh, take a tack cloth and get rid of any of that paint dust that might be adhering to the surface. And then after that, you are ready to apply your main coat. Always be sure to uh, shake your can well. I usually shake it for a good one to two minutes before I apply anything. Um, and it's always a good idea to actually do kind of a test shot uh, one or two before you, you spray whatever it is that you are painting, um, just to kind of clear the nozzle a little bit. Since these dry bake covers are plastic, um, I ended up putting about somewhere between five and 10 uh, relatively thin layers of the black spray paint on here, uh, the satin black, and uh, that was plenty. Um, usually metal takes a little more, but um, you just want to apply multiple uh, thin coats, much better than applying fewer uh, thick coats. Now if all goes to plan, you should have a nice, smooth, even coat of your main coat, and I've generally found that it's really not uh, terribly difficult to accomplish this, at least with plastic. But let's take a look at metal. I'm doing some patchwork here on the Tower of Doom build, and so the primer is already on there. In fact, I've got several layers of black paint already. I'm just kind of going through. I've sanded it down, and I'm going to apply a couple new layers and then a new clear coat to it. So it's hopefully a little more robust, as I've already had some scratching over the last few months if I've moved it around. Um, on this case, I've probably applied, because of the metal, um, I've probably applied at least a dozen uh, coats, I'm waiting about a minute in between them. Uh, if you wait more than, I'd say, a half hour to an hour, you should probably just give it a couple days and then come back, probably sand it would be a good idea, and then uh, apply more coats. And do pay attention to the edges and the corners as those tend to chip the easiest and also coat oftentimes not as easily as the more flat surfaces of the case. Now I can tell you, despite your best efforts, uh, when working with metal, it is often the case that you kind of get this blotchy pattern. Really the only way to address it is wait two or three days, uh, sand it, and try painting it again. Though I've generally found that I actually kind of like it um, on older cases. I like it that it looks a little textured. Uh, it really doesn't bother me. So I think that largely comes down to personal preference. Now the front of the Tower of Doom case here, it also turned out really well, nice and even, uh, good coverage. Um, but I did want to point out, you know, it's quite textured. A lot of uh, cases, of course, have uh, air intakes and so forth. Uh, make sure that you're going at it from a variety of different angles uh, with your spray can so that you get good coverage. All right, last up is the clear coat, and uh, I would wait a good two, maybe three or four days. Um, make sure that your main coat has had plenty of time to dry and mature and so forth. Um, it can really be nasty if you don't wait long enough uh, before you put on your clear coat. I've seen paint bubble up and have all kinds of problems. So uh, when in doubt, just give it a little more time, be patient with it, make sure it's nice and dry. Now I do often put on a clear coat, um, I guess in a few cases with patching uh, cases. Um, I haven't done that, but most of the time if I'm doing a full side of a case or a whole case, uh, the clear coat is appropriate and I most of the time end up going with uh, this crystal clear coating. Now in terms of how many layers you put down, it just really kind of depends on how glossy you want it to be. Uh, if you want it to be really glossy, then you might have to put down many. Uh, coats um, you know you probably want to put down a few uh, wait you know a couple days uh, sand it with maybe 320 grit or maybe even a little higher than that maybe something like four or five hundred grit sandpaper uh, smooth it out and then give it uh, another coating and you can keep doing that actually making it smoother a little thicker um, I usually end up just doing a couple passes I will go through and maybe put four or five coats on and then come back to a few days later, give a little bit of a sanding and then put on my final coats. 
here's the product of all that labor uh, the front of the tower doom case ready to go got uh, the clear coat on there uh, it's, it's it's shiny but not too shiny um, again I could go a bit more glossy um, just go through it again sand it and apply a few more layers but I think this is good I think it fits well with the rest of the case so uh, by the way, you know, stay tuned because um, I'm finishing, I'm trying to finish up that case uh, here in the next couple of weeks or so. Feel free to comment below. Let me know if there's anything I missed. Um, certainly there's more hints and tips out there than I've been able to squeeze in here. Thanks guys. Uh, come back and uh, I'll see you next time.